Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I want to thank everyone who is here, both physically and virtually, to attend the most important and historic event here in Watsonville. Right now, in Hiroshima, Japan, people are gathering together to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the dropping of the atomic bomb on the city of Hiroshima. And at 4.15 here, our local time, we will be participating in the ring of our large bell called the Bon Show to commemorate the 75 years since the dropping of that bomb. Uh, in my many years of traveling to Hiroshima, I've seen that city become transformed. And it's really a rebuilt city. But we can't forget that it's built upon the ashes and the destroyed buildings and the lives of thousands of people. And so that city stands as a monument, not only of that event, but of the suffering and the tragedy of that event. But also, it's a symbol of hope, a hope for peace, a hope for no more wars, a hope for humankind to live in harmony with each other. And so as we conduct today's ceremony in celebration of those 75 years, I hope that we will keep in mind that it is but to promote it and to encourage others to promote peace so that events like this will never ever happen again. I want to thank all of the people who are here to commemorate this event and our President Ken Tanimoto will be introducing them in a minute. But I want to make sure that we rededicate ourselves to, the, to peace, to peace in our homes, peace in our city, in our country, and in the world. So let's take a moment to bow our heads in gratitude to those who have gone before us and reveal to us this truth of life. In Buddhism, we are taught that our animosities of this moment should not be carried into eternity. At least we continue to suffer the consequences of our karma. The same can be said of the past. We cannot harbor anger and resentment of the events 75 years ago. At least we create more evil karma in the world. However, we conduct these memorials because we don't want to forget. We don't want to forget what the Buddha taught and we don't want to forget the horrors of war and the voices that echo never ever again. The 75th anniversary of Hiroshima and Nagasaki is a moment of awakening for all of us. It is not a moment of reconciliation, regret, or right or wrong. On the contrary, it is a moment of seeing the results of the poisons of greed, anger, and ignorance, and awakening to our own self-centered ways. 
As I awaken to the truth of my life, I am reminded of the words of the Buddha. My wondrous power by its great light brightens the countless lands throughout, removes the darkness of the three defilements, and delivers all from suffering and pain. Opening the eyes of wisdom, I will end this darkness of ignorance, blocking all paths of evil. I will open the gate to attainment. Namo Amidavis. Namo Amidavis. Namo Amidavis. Namo Amidavis. Thank you very much. And now it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce to you our temple president and former Buddhist Churches of America president, uh, Mr. Ken Tanimoto. Thank you, Reverend Sinseki, um, for wiping down to you as well. Um, today, as we're observing a day that happened exactly almost 75 years ago today, that really changed uh, humankind. It's so August 6, 1945, in Hiroshima, Japan, a day in which I hope never ever happens again, a day like that never happens again anywhere. Like we're experiencing today's pandemic, Crisis. What happened in Hiroshima changed forever the way we are looking at mankind and humankind. At this time, I'd like to thank and welcome every one of you who are here today, virtually as well, present here today, to pay respect and honor the city and the people in Hiroshima, as well as Nagasaki, who were perished 75 years ago. Now, I'd like to read a letter from uh, Mayor. Rebecca Garcia, who couldn't be here today, the mayor of Watsonville. So she, she quotes, As mayor of Watsonville, I was saddened when the Reverend Sinsek invited me to say a few words for this event. I was saddened to remember that over 200,000 mainly civilians died as a result of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. The Japanese community has been a positive one in the development of what Watsonville is today. They established businesses, they taught our children in schools, they provided health care, they harvested our crops, and they shared their delicious food and beautiful culture with us. They have always been an ally to the Mexican community in Watsonville, of which I am one. Personally, my grand granddaughter, Samantha, is a paternal granddaughter of a Japanese immigrant who came to Watsonville after the bombings. Both she and I share in our love for our granddaughter. In the United States, we believe in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. On this anniversary, I wish that this is true for all the descendants of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, wherever they may be. This is a letter from Mayor uh, Rebecca Garcia. And now Reverend Sinseki will lead us um, in Super Channel.
city of Hiroshima, we gather to remember and honor those who died. We gather to recommit ourselves to the cause of peace. Today we remember our Dharma brothers and sisters who have died in that horrific moment. We also remember those who suffered the after effects of the bomb, and those who were psychologically, psychologically scarred by the bomb. We gather to express our gratitude for Amida's benevolent compassion. It is an opportunity for all of us to strengthen our relationships and to deepen our understanding of life through the members of teachings taught by Shinran Shon. This moment allows us to realize how our departed loved ones continue to influence our lives. Through them we are made to realize that our lives are a continuation of their lives and all other lives. May the light of the lantern remind us of the light that shines in the boundless life of those we love. That light is a reminder of what we have received and how their life continues to take effect upon us. The deepest reverence and thankfulness for the all embracing wisdom and compassion of Amida, we reaffirm the three homages. I go to the Buddha for guidance, I go to the Dharma for guidance, I go to the Sangha for guidance. Shiga, 
City of Watsonville to say a few words. Um, first circle and say a few words. Certainly my honor to be here today, not only as an elected official and a representative of the people of Watsonville, but on a personal level. Many of you know that my wife and I spent two years in the kingdom of Nepal, the, the birthplace of Buddha. 
And so we were befriended by many, many Buddhists in Nepal and had the uh, wonderful occasion to uh, meet and enjoy their friendship and uh, invited to uh, many uh, temples and have a very positive relationship with um, all of the Buddhist people that we've ever met. So we humbly say thank you very much and want to acknowledge the uh, presence of the, the temple and the, and the temple officials here. And let me say these are very difficult times in our nation at this time. There are difficult times in Watsonville as well. And so on this uh, historic occasion, on this commemoration, we should always learn from the past, and we should never forget, and we should never attempt to erase the past. We must learn from it. And so I call upon all the temple members and, and the people of Watsonville to not attempt to erase history, but to learn from it, and that applies nationally as well. We could use more peace, less rhetoric, more love. It's my honor. I wish you the very best. Please help us make Watsonville the sanctuary of peace that it should and could be. So I say congratulations on the commemoration and the remembrance of this day, this hour. I call upon everyone for their reflection throughout our region and the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. <clears throat> First for those kind and wisdom, uh, kind and wise words, and we should all listen to that. You know, we all follow that. Thank you very much. Next, I'm going to call in uh, Phyllis Nakamene, who is representing the uh, city, the Kyle County Center City. So, first to show, please. Thank Larry Oda, who was from Monterey Temple, who was, who was actually one of the past presidents of Monterey, but also the past president of the National uh, Japanese American Citizen League, and he'll say a few words, so we're honored to have Mr. Oda. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here to uh, observe the uh, 75th anniversary of the, uh, the attack on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, I just wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about um, one of the stories that came out of the bombing, uh, and that is uh, the story of uh, Sadako Sasaki. Now, Sadako was uh, about two years old when uh, she was exposed to the radiation of the bomb in Hiroshima. And uh, she you know, was a, a normal child, uh, but when she was about 10 years old, she started to uh, exhibit the, the symptoms of, of leukemia. And uh, as the disease progressed, her friends told her that uh, if you fold a thousand origami cranes, that uh, you know you would uh, 
he granted a wish. And there's a, a Japanese legend where if you fold a thousand cranes, that uh, the crane in Japanese culture is a symbol of longevity and uh, prosperity. So Sadako started folding her thousand cranes uh, in hopes of uh, reaching that goal and uh, being granted a wish. And her wish was to uh, be a part of the track team at her uh, middle school because uh, she loved to, to run and she was good at it. But uh, she folded about 1,400 cranes and she still got weaker and weaker. And uh, after yeah, she folded uh, 14, about 1,400 cranes, uh, she was too weak and uh, well, she passed away. But this, uh, the cranes that she folded were uh, kept by her family and were given to places to, to commemorate peace. Uh, Pearl Harbor, uh, the Japanese American National Museum, and other museums. So uh, one of the uh, contributions that she made was to really make the sudo, the paper uh, folded crane, a symbol of peace. Now the, her friends, when she died, uh, collected money to build a monument to her. And that monument uh, stands at the uh, Peace Memorial Park in Hiroshima. You'll, uh, if you get to see it when you go, you'll get to see it. There's a, a tall uh, structure with a figure of Sadako on the top holding a, a big wire crane. And uh, on the side of this memorial are uh, angels flying and uh, the angels are, are represent the children that were killed in the bombing. So uh, you know, we have Sadako to thank for uh, making the, the Tsuru a symbol of peace in the world. So that's my story. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Now, uh, I'd like to uh, also introduce uh, Mr. Moss Hashimoto to come say a few words. Uh, Moss is, as you, a lot of people know, is an icon, historical icon in the Watsonville area as well as nationally practically. Uh, he's very much involved in the Japanese American Citizen League locally as well as nationally. He's been an educator and also a civic leader and um, you know, Moss needs an introduction for a lot of uh, a lot of reasons because he is Mr. Watsonville practically. So Moss, thank you. So do the show. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation to speak to you today. And thank you people for coming to this very first event at this temple to celebrate. It's not a celebration, an observance of what happened 75 years ago. Hiroshima is synonymous with peace. I, it's very difficult for me. I've been to Hiroshima about five times now. And it hurts every time I go there. Because I know what happened. But I'm also grateful. Uh, how, how so? My two brothers were in the military intelligence service. They participated in the war in the Pacific, saw action, and they were poised for the invasion of Japan. And 
it was estimated that perhaps more than a million people, Japanese, Allied soldiers, would be killed in the invasion. The war ended abruptly, thank goodness. They never dropped a bomb on the city again because we know you know what's going to happen. To be an advocate for peace is so important. That's the lesson of Hiroshima. To be an advocate for peace worldwide. To get along. To understand each other's strengths and weaknesses, your own. Work together. Together. For peace. Don't ever forget that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be the last person speaking, so, uh, but I would say a few words before. Um, 415 comes. Um, I have a personal, uh, this day is kind of personal to me because 75 years ago, uh, while my mother was in Tule Lake relocation camp, um, a bomb hit and it, it eliminated part of my family. Uh, all of my mom's aunts, uncles, cousins perished on that day in Hiroshima. She had no more relatives left in Hiroshima, except for one more cousin who was out. And this is kind of a personal, uh, you know, personal thing because part of me was left in Hiroshima as well. Um, and to this day, there's a lot of people who are still suffering. If you really think about it, from the radiation 75 years ago, who are still suffering the after effects of radiation poisoning. I've been like like Moss. I've been fortunate to be at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, both atomic bomb museums. And every time I go there, I come, I hear voices. I hear voices of sorrow. I hear voices of, of grief, anger, and pain. And it still resonates to this day. I hear this every time I go to, to the museum. Every time I go to both places, there's a sense, a sensation there. When my aunt took me there in 1972, I didn't know what to expect. I came out with tears. Can you see a grown man, 21 years old, with tears in his eyes, saying, how do you explain this? There's no explanation for this at all. I know I have time. Anyway, um, what I want to say is that, I know I'm going to cut this real short because right now it's almost time. We got two more minutes. I want to I want to say that I wish every one of us could experience go go to Hiroshima and Nagasaki to see that to feel that and knowing that weapons of mass destruction is not needed in this world. There's far too much destruction in our world. There's far too much to kill humankind to, to kill the whole world. It eliminates our own existence. And I want to just end real quickly by this one story. Um, everybody knows about the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 in October. Everybody know a lot of people, young people don't know, but a lot of us know about this. I was fearful of that guy of not waking up the next day knowing that a bomb could hit. And I remember my high school teacher saying to me, to her class, you have no fear. Her name was Mrs. Miles, and she said in her class, because this is this is the day that when President Kennedy was um, uh, did not back down from Khrushchev, not knowing that 
what's going to happen the next day. And she said, um, and was, the whole world is holding his breath. It says, to have faith in our leaders that good will always prevail over bad, and to have faith and hope, and have no fear. And she says, nobody wins in war, and let's hope war will not ever happen again. So I'll end it with that. Thank you very much. And now, 4.15 is my time, thank you. Thank you, Ken. So it is 4.15. It is 8.15 a.m. in Hiroshima, Japan, and we'll begin ringing the bell 75 times, one for every year. So we're going to ask each of you to come up, burn some incense, and ring the bell three times each. And there's pairs of gloves over here if you'll uh, get a pair of gloves, and, and uh, they'll monitor you as you come in. But I want you to notice the picture here on this altar, too. It's a picture of the Hiroshima Elementary School students who that day took this picture, all smiling.
Thank you. Um, before, I, uh, I, before we leave, I want to acknowledge some people. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge everybody attending today. We pay respect to the people who have lost their lives and never never let us forget about what happened on this day 75 years ago. And let us remember that, that we, we really need to think about what happened. And hopefully we can count on our leaders worldwide to answer the, answer the name of peace. Um, I wanted to first acknowledge Barbara, Barbara Shingai, she's right there, she is a temple secretary. Bill Woodberg, who's the temple uh, minister assistant, who's right there. He's, always, he's like the president emeritus of Watsonville, the same thing with Perry Yoshida, which is right here. And Perry has always been helping out with his wife Kim, Kim's around here as well. Um, Patrick Casey, who is helping with the audiovisual, he's a member here. Ma uh, Marsha Hashimoto, who is a wife of Mas Hashimoto, who is president of the JCL right now, another icon of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> of Watsonville. Larry, uh, Larry, of course, and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Wendy Hurst, who's right here, Corby here, who is, um, who thank you for coming today's service and remembrance because. This is a remembrance that hopefully never, ever, that everybody regards as something which is historical, but also something that would hope that we learn from it. I think the learning part of this day is so important because I think all the world leaders, and I have felt this from the day I was there when I was 21 years old leaving there, okay, all the world leaders who have nuclear bombs on their hands and their fingertips should go to Nagasaki and Hiroshima and see the destruction, see the pain, see the sorrow, see the, see people crying of what the bomb could do. Atomic energy is a wonderful thing. So let's have it work for us and not against us because this is something that lesson learned. I think this is the most important thing we have to remember that their lives will be in vain unless we learn from this experience in this day. So, uh, Reverend uh, Sinseki, do you want to say a few words? Thank you, Ken. <clears throat> I want to just mention this little pamphlet here. There's uh, a pile of them over here with Barbara and Perry. Um, and these are stories of survivors of the atomic bomb that was written at the 44th anniversary of the dropping of the bomb. So. There's a, a pile of them. Please take them home as a uh, remembrance. But I'd like to close with a reading. If you please join me in God's show. We have gathered here in the quietude of this temple to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. We faithfully recite the Nembutsu and humbly join our hands together in God's show. May the fragrance of incense teach us the purity of our intentions. <clears throat> May the beauty of the flowers offered remind us of the glory of the Dharma. May the lights that burn brightly upon this altar lead our thoughts to Amida's eternal light of wisdom 
that dispels the darkness of ignorance. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Thank you very much. Um, in closing, I want to thank you for attending today's uh, service, and I think we all we all could come go home remembering this day and think about and think about what what the lessons learned. Like I said, because um, I f I feel that that we have a lot to learn, and our leaders hopefully could hear us, could could actually um, could actually hear us and actually feel that there is pain and suffering, but also goodness in mankind. And hopefully we can all learn from this. So again, thank you very much for coming, and thank you all, and please drive home carefully. Thank you very much. Thank you again, brother. Thank you. Thank you.